DreAllDay.com. Basketball fans, hope y'all are all doing great. And I don't really talk about basketball that much no more. You can see things are a little bit different. But I still am a basketball fan, basketball player at heart. And a couple people asked me, Dre, are you going to do that playoff preview video, video that you normally do? And since people asked, I wasn't going to do it. But since a couple people asked, I said, all right, I'll go ahead and make the play, playoff preview video let's talk about it and we're going to get right into it i'm gonna make two different videos one for the eastern conference one for the western conference and we're gonna if i gotta choose a coast i gotta choose the east i live out here so don't go there so let's start with the eastern conference first we'll start with the loser teams then we'll talk about the the weaker teams in the play in then we'll talk about the good teams that actually made the playoffs <laughs> so let's get right into it starting with the east Starting at the bottom, Detroit Pistons. I don't even know what to say about them. Nothing to say about them. Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan is going to sell the team. I don't know why he wants to sell it, but he wants to sell. So then there'll be no more black owners in the NBA. If Michael Jordan sells his state, and I'm sure that'll be a story if he sells it to some people who are not black, not black people involved. Uh, who Does anybody? Eh, I don't really care. Uh, but they suck, so we're not giving them too much time. Orlando Magic. Um, Paolo is great. He's a great young player, and we'll see what if any of these teams get somebody great in the draft. Orlando would be great. If, let's say if they get a uh, maybe not win Bayana, but if they get Scoop, the guard, and which is, he's, it seems like he's pretty much locked into the number two spot, they can get him at the guard spot to go with Paolo. That's a great combination moving forward. Washington Wizards. Um, they signed Bradley Bill to that five-year max extension. Um, you can't give a max contract to a player who's not going to at least get you to the playoffs. Uh, the Wizards were 35 and 47. They are a bad team. They are a less than mediocre team, but they got a player with a max contract. Detroit does not. Charlotte does not. Orlando does not. And the Pacers are the other team that didn't make even the playing game. None of these teams have anybody who's making anywhere close to what the Wizards paid Bradley Bill. Why'd they give him a max contract with all that money and – him alone, if you give a player that much money, that player alone has to get you to at least the play in, not even the playoffs, the play in. You got to get into the top 10 if he's on your roster. Like when Dwayne Wade was with the Heat the years after they won the championship, the first title, and before LeBron, you were in the playoffs every year with Dwayne Wade. Uh, Dwight Howard in Orlando was that guy. Charles Barkley back in the day with the Sixers, he was that guy. Michael Jordan with the Bulls, he was that guy. I'm talking about before they start winning championships. Russell Westbrook, even after KD left and Russell was doing the triple double thing, you were making the playoffs if Russell Westbrook was on your team. If you got a max contract player, you are making the playoffs. And now the playoffs is only the top. You got to make the top 10. These guys are making the top eight. Wizards couldn't even make the top 10 with a max contract now on their roster. That's a bad business move by them. This is not even a knock on Brad Beal. If he or someone in Brad Beal's camp sees this, this is not a knock on Brad Beal. Look, if they offer me that money, I take the money too. But if you're going to give that money to somebody, you got to at least make the top 10. That's crazy. So the Wizards are, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Indiana Pacers, uh, I love Halliburton, a great young player. And they they are moving in the right direction, I think. Next year, they their players get some more growth. And let's see who they end up getting in the draft. Uh, they can move forward. So that's enough of the bum teams that didn't make the, the playing tournament. Chicago Bulls. Now, they got these scores, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, and the, both of those guys have a lot of fans. They're both very good players, but I don't know. If Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan are your two best players, are you doing anything? My answer is no, you're not. You're not doing anything. So I think they can beat the Raptors in the play-in game. That's who they're playing. I think they can beat the Raptors, but then they would go into – they might get – yeah, because then the, they would, the only place they can get is eight seed, right? So they would play the, the loser of the Miami and Atlanta game. They get the eight seed, which means they get to play against the Milwaukee Bucks. That's a, I would say that's a gentleman's sweep. Gentleman's sweep is five games. I think that's what happened to them last year. Wasn't that last year the Bucks beat them in five games? So I ain't got to talk about them. Raptors, I don't want to talk about them. Atlanta Hawks against Miami Heat. I live in Miami. I'm from Philadelphia, for those who don't know. I And that game is tonight. I'm recording this on Tuesday. So the Hawks, there's no way that the Hawks should beat the Heat. The Heat should stomp the Hawks out in this game, <laughs> in this playing game. They better stomp them out. And the Hawks ain't got nothing that could do anything with the Heat on the road, especially in one game just to get the seven seed was then Miami would get to play against Boston, which, be, which would be a great rematch of the last year. Was that last year's? Last year's Eastern Conference Finals. So, yes, that would be a great rematch. I don't think Boston fans want them to be playing the Heat because the Heat are a tough out, even though I think the Heat are going to lose in the first round. They are a tough out. That's a team that's going to give you a they're going to give you a black eye, even if you beat them up. So that's a team that it, whatever team I'm cheering for, I don't want them playing against the Heat. Because the Heat are not going to lay down and get their ass kicked. Like these other three teams that's in the plan who are all going to get their asses kicked, no matter who makes it. 
Uh, I wouldn't want to play the Heat, but I don't think that he's going to win, but I wouldn't want to play them. So I think they are going to beat the Hawks in this playing game. And it, I don't think this is even going to be a close game. I, if I was a betting man, I'd bet on the Miami Heat. If you could bet in Florida, sports bet on for, in Florida, I would bet money on the Miami Heat winning the game tonight. So any of you who bet, I'm going to put this video out today. So any of you who bet, bet on the Miami Heat, they're going to beat the Hawks tonight. Now, moving on to the teams that actually earned a regular playoff spot is we'll start with the we'll start with the let's start with the four or five matchup Cleveland Cavs against the New York Knicks this will be a very good series I see this being a seven game series if I had to bet money I would bet this they got those kind of bets that a series goes seven I would bet this one being a seven game series the Cavs against the Knicks they match up pretty closely they both both teams have you no know, a bunch of good solid players um these teams are very even even though Cavs finished with four more wins than the Knicks in the regular season. This will be good. Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, uh, Evan Mobley, Julius Randle, and all the other players on all those teams. That'll be a very good series. And whichever one of these teams can win, I think it'll be interesting to see them play against the number one seed, who is going to win in the first round, moving on in the second round. We'll get to that in a second. So that's going to be a good series. Who am I picking? Oh, yeah, I got I to gotta give you picks, right? All right, so my pick for that series – Cleveland against the Knicks, I'm going to go with the Cavs. I'm going to go with the Cavs just because they have home court advantage. I think Donovan Mitchell is the best player in the series, so I'm going to go with him. He has had some playoff success. He's won a round or two in the playoffs before, so I'm going to go with him. It's not like people in the Knicks haven't won a round. Jalen Brunson won, won a couple rounds last year, but I'm going to go with Donovan Mitchell if I had to pick between the two guys. So I'm going to go with the Cavs and with home court advantage to win the first round series. The other one, my hometown Sixers playing against the Brooklyn Nets in the first round. Brooklyn is not going to be an easy out. Now, yeah, they don't have KD or uh, Kyrie Irving, and I guess we could say they don't have Ben Simmons anymore either. But they are not – this is not a trashy team. And let's remember this is the NBA. So even after the KD trade, Brooklyn was competitive. They are not going to beat the Sixers. The Sixers are going to win this series. This should be a five-game series. If the Sixers come out and handle their damn business, if Joel Embiid plays in this series like he was playing and like he was campaigning for that damn MVP award, which he'll probably win, they should sweep these guys because who on the Nets can guard? Who on the Nets is going to stop Joel Embiid? I know they have Claxton, but Nick Cla Claxton ain't stopping Joel Embiid. This should be a sweep. It's not going to be a sweep. I would say this is a five-game series if the Sixers come out and handle their business, a gentleman's sweep. If the Sixers come out um, not ready to handle their business and Brooklyn punches them in the mouth, this might be a six-game series, but it should not be any more than that. Sixers should handle their business in five. I'm going to go with the Sixers in five. Oh, the Cavs, Knicks, I'm going to go Cavs. I'm going to say that's a seven-game series. I'm going to say Cavs in seven. As far as that 2-7 matchup, I'm assuming the Heat win tonight. So that would be Boston, Miami. Boston fans, I'm sorry. Y'all got to play Miami in the first round. That ain't going to be an easy out for Boston, even though I think Boston will win. This is going to be a tough series, but I also think Boston's going to come out ready. To, they're going to come out swinging because they know Miami is not a lay down. Miami ain't no walk in the park. They're going to come out ready to play. And I think Boston will be ready to go. I say Boston beats Miami in six. And if somehow Miami does not win tonight and they end up playing, Boston plays the Hawks in the first round, that's a sweep. I say Boston beats them in four games. They should sweep the Atlanta Hawks. Now, if they end up playing the Heat, I say six. Boston in six. Now, the 1-8 matchup, that'll be Milwaukee against either Atlanta, Toronto, or Chicago. I don't give a damn which one of these teams gets the AC. That's a, that should be. If Milwaukee comes out, like, we're going to prove a point, sweep. Uh, again, these days, I don't know. Teams don't come out with the same. They don't bring that same verve. So I'm going to say this is a five-gamer. I say a gentleman's sweep. That's what we call a gentleman's sweep. Five-game series, four to one. Milwaukee wins this one in five. So Milwaukee beats the whoever, Atlanta, Toronto, Chicago, whichever one. It doesn't matter. They all average mediocre teams. Milwaukee's going to stop them out. And that'll be a five-game series. This is all assuming no injuries or anything. So that's my picks for the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. So now all y'all got it. Next video, we're gonna do Western Conference.